Hello, and thanks for checking out this video from Placing Culture, which along with various other tutorials is also located at placingculture.blogspot.com. My name is David Meek, I'm currently a doctoral candidate in the Anthropology Department at the University of Georgia. Through this blog, I try to provide some insights into how evolving cartographic technologies and methods are increasingly mediating our understanding of the myriad interrelations between culture and place. In this screencast, we're going to interview Sarah Hicks, a religious historian at the University of Pennsylvania. We're going to learn how Sarah got involved with GIS and where she's using it in her research. In addition to Sarah's interview, we'll provide an overview of the process of making the map. It won't be a really detailed description of the step-by-step, -step, but we're going to cover those steps in later screencasts. Maybe you could just tell me a little bit about how you became interested in uh, using GIS. Yeah, over the Summer, last summer, I was working on a project with my advisor on um, some inscriptions in South India, uh, actually to do with mercantile group. And he really wanted to map them and try to look at the spatial relationship between different mercantile communities. The problem was neither of us knew anything about mapping, <laughs> so we had this idea of sort of like, you know, using... Google Earth and then Photoshop and then come to find out, of course, there's, you know, a whole body of software and all of this, um, all of these different tools to, you know, do exactly that kind of project. Okay, cool. So I work on uh, Jainism and early Kanaka and my research is really focused around how Jainism, which today is a minority religion, a very, very small minority in India, became basically a dominant, the dominant religious community um, during the medieval and early medieval period in South India, and in particular Karnataka. And one of the major marks of medieval Jainism is the development of these religious institutions called Mutt. Okay, so a Mutt is a basically a religious center. It will have a temple. It will have a place for Jain monks and nuns to stay. Um, and it's basically an administrative headquarters. Uh, Muds are a fascinating um, number of, of inscriptions. You have really interesting carving. Um, so I'm hoping to be able to use some of this software to spatially depict, um, you know, the relationships between inscriptions and sculptures and things like this. So the purpose of this first map was just basically to get a visualization of where these ones are. So a good starting point in terms of thinking about the first map that you know Dave and I wanted to work on was actually just plotting the points um, and actually getting an idea of you know basically just a basic map of where the muds are um, you know in South India. And because this isn't a topic that hasn't, you know, really been researched, not there's not a map of of the mud yet. So this is kind of a, an experimentation in, in making this, you know, this type of map. After I located all of the mud and pinpointed their locations and recorded them in Google My Maps, I exported those points as a KMZ file to Google Earth. So using ArcGIS, we brought in a world-based map data layer um, and basically exported a polygon of India and then brought in state boundaries. We brought the district boundaries in and then we uh, took the KMZ file, imported that, converted it to a shape file and overlaid that as a layer on top of the other map layers. We then selected the districts in which there were months and exported those uh, with an ArcGIS as a separate shape file. After adding the shape file of the districts in which there were months, we played around with the symbology a little bit uh, to highlight those districts and then change the back the country color so that those districts stood out. With all the data layers in place, we started creating the map in ArcGIS and just started adding in the features that we wanted, adding in the names, uh, changing the symbology to highlight certain features. The type of project that I'm doing 
really is, you know, multidisciplinary. It's social science, but it's also a pretty strong humanities project. And that this type of software really can, you know, not only be used for a variety of disciplines within the social sciences, but also has some interesting applicability in terms of, you know, more pure humanities. That's all the time we have for today. My name is David Meek from the Anthropology Department of the University of Georgia. You can contact me at dmeek at uga.edu or check out placingculture.blogspot.com for more tutorials. Thanks again.